Many years ago, I had a dream. I dreamt I was walking along a road that stretched ahead of me for about 100 meters, and it ended abruptly at the edge of a cliff. Now, along this 100 meter stretch of road, there was also a white continuous line embedded in the road. And as I looked closer at this white line, I noticed there were phrases inscribed. And I began to read them. They were all of similar tone. You're stupid. Why must you be so stupid? You idiot. You're worthless. I wish you were not born. It was a mistake having you. You're hopeless. My dad was a perfectionist. He worked long hours, was stressed most of the time. I was a creative child, but I was an average student. I struggled with math and Chinese. I was good at art, but my dad used to say, pursue your passion as your hobby. When it was time for my report card to be signed, my dad would voice his expectations, disapproval and criticisms for two hours before caning me and sending me off to bed with tears and a sore butt. This went on for years. In the night time, my dad would cane me in the daytime as my teacher is teaching. I couldn't pay attention because I saw an imaginary cane floating around. All throughout uh, primary school and secondary school, Eventually, I finished my O-levels and it was time to choose my next course of study. My dad wanted me to study accounting. My dad's approval is very important to me. So I applied for accounting at a local polytechnic. I remember the day I was to apply for the course. I was in the car. My mom drove me to the school. I was filling up the application forms in the car. When we reached, I looked up and I said, hey, this is not the school I want to go to. And my mom said, Really? I thought this was the school you want to come to. And I said, whatever, doesn't matter. At that stage, I didn't care what I studied. I didn't care where I studied. The course was three years long. I didn't understand a single thing that was being taught. By now, I had grown accustomed to the feeling of stress. Interestingly, one of my lecturers asked me to write the script for the annual theatre production at school. So I did this for three years, and I was good at it. But unfortunately, it didn't reflect in my grades. At long last, after three years of suffering and accounting, I sat for my last exam. My freedom was close at hand. I could smell it. I didn't know what I was going to do for the rest of my life, but at least no more studying. The results came back. I failed. My cost accounting. My whole world collapsed. I felt stupid, worthless, I wish I wasn't born. I had to repeat six more months, and I was the only one in my entire cohort who could not graduate on time. The night I found out about the failure, I couldn't help it, I cried. All my teenage life, I was labelled as average. And now, on my 20th birthday, I was a failure. Something had to change. This could not go on. Surely there must be something I could do well in. I decided, yes, there is something I can do well in. And I decided to go searching for that elusive something. I tried out all sorts of jobs. I worked as a shoe salesman. I tried out graphic design. I even did a bit of teaching. I learned what I was good at, what I liked, what I disliked. It was a time of experimenting, but not the kind of experiments we do in school, where there's only a right and wrong answer. This experimenting involved learning more about myself and how I function in the world around me. In this state of freedom, I discovered my love for films. Being Singaporean, I spent a lot of time in the cinemas. But I wasn't just a regular cinema goer. I was interested in the process of filmmaking. I sought out rare films. 
I began to notice the work of individual directors, and I wanted to be involved in filmmaking. I went to my dad and I told him I want to study film. He disagreed with my choice of study, but after a long talk, he was willing to support my pursuit of a degree. And so off I went to film school. I spent a year studying in Australia because that's all my dad could afford. I remember the first week I was there, I went to the academic advisor's office to ask for special permission to cram more subjects into each semester so that I could finish faster. They eventually gave me the special permission with a warning that my grades will be adversely affected. But I was so happy studying film. I attacked every class with a vengeance. I devoured every film book I could find. I participated wholeheartedly in every class discussion. I prepared beforehand every lecture and tutorial. For the first time in my life, I was feeding my intellect with the subject of its choice. I taught half my classes. Half my grades were high distinctions, the other half were distinctions. I received recommendations, letters from all my lecturers. I was on the dean's list for all the semesters I was there. In my last semester, I obtained a scholarship. I never knew I could be great at something until I started pursuing my passion. When I came back after graduation, I got a job with a media company within 10 days of my return. I noticed that my seniors who had been working at this company for over four years were still working till 4 a.m. on many nights. After a while, I myself became drained. I didn't know day from night. My biological clock was all messed up. I was sleeping at odd hours of the day. I changed jobs to a production house, and I started working regular hours, 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. every day. I remember thinking to myself, how can it be that I see I spend more time in the office than at home? And what is the use of a person getting married and settling down if they see their colleagues more than their family? After several years of this zombie-inducing lifestyle, I completely burnt out. I never wanted to work in production again. I was dead tired. How could this be? I had pursued what I was passionate about. I wondered to myself if maybe, perhaps, my dad was right all along. Maybe the right jobs are the safe jobs. Maybe passion should be pursued as a hobby. Maybe I should have stayed in accounting. There's nothing wrong with being average. Maybe I'm just average. An average Singaporean who should be in a regular job. But in the midst of my doubt and tiredness, I could feel the spark that still lay within. One night, I turned on the television and I saw an interview with a violinist who played for the Singapore Symphony Orchestra. He said something that stuck with me. How can we hope to compete on an international level if we pursue our passions as a hobby? I wanted to be an acclaimed filmmaker but I was making corporate videos and wedding videos. I was allowing myself to be sidetracked. I needed a change of attitude. Did I believe in my goal enough to dedicate my life to it? Was I prepared to do whatever it takes to get good at my chosen profession? I needed focus. If I stood in the hot sun, with a piece of paper for 10 hours, the paper wouldn't burn. But with a magnifying glass, focusing the same beams of light on a single spot, within seconds, it would light up. I set three rules for myself. I was going to work towards feature-length films, I was going to tell fictional stories, and I was not going to be sidetracked by corporate or wedding videos anymore. I tattooed my hand with the words, filmmaker, so that I would not back out. I had one goal, to make an award-winning feature film in three years. Every time I was tempted to lose focus and be discouraged, I would succeed in some small way. 
For example, there was a local film competition called Fly by Night, where the participants gathered on a Friday, they received a theme, they went off to shoot on a Saturday, gathered back on a Sunday to watch each other's finished work. There were seven prizes to be won, $300 each. Now at this stage, I had been making films full-time for one year. The other participants were doing it as a hobby. There was no way I was going to lose. And yet when the winners were announced, I wasn't one of them. I was sad and discouraged. Monday morning, I received a phone call. Hi, I was there at the screening. I saw your film and I loved it. I want to commission you to do a short film for the organization I work for. I'm going to give you a budget of $15,000, out of which you'll be paid $3,000. So instead of getting $300, I got $3,000 in the end. Another occasion, I made a film with two friends because I didn't have enough money to afford actors. When I showed this finished film to some of my closest friends, they laughed and made fun of me. They told me I shouldn't make any more films. They told me I should give up and go back to a 9 to 5 job. I was devastated. Yet based on their feedback, I re-edited the film and I submitted it for a film festival. The film festival contacted me and told me they loved it. Eventually that film went on to win Best ASEAN Feature at the Malaysian Video Awards. And it was exactly three years from the time I set my goal. With passion and focus, I begin to achieve my goals. In the last 10 years, I've been an independent filmmaker. I've won four awards for the five feature films I've made. I've had countless nominations, and I've traveled the world, all expense paid, to present my films at film festivals. I get to be creative the way I used to be as a child. My dad is proud of me. He himself has started to pull out the old family videos to edit his own award-winning short films. But my success is not measured by achievements. My success lies in being able to enjoy every moment of the ups and downs that my chosen path brings. We all are walking along a road. We all need encouragement to become extraordinary. We all need someone who will listen to us with openness and acceptance. We all need someone who will show us approval and say to us, it's okay more often. We need praise rather than criticism. Yes, rather than no. We need someone to believe in us, say to us, you've done well. I believe you. Yes, you can. I believe in you. You can, you will. And hopefully, instead of falling over the edge of the cliff, we average Singaporeans will find the courage to live our dreams. I am here to tell you that if I can live such a life, so can you. <laughs>